everybody, and welcome back. We're talking with Dave Hall, longtime city councilor, seeking a fifth term as a city councilor in the city of Haverhill. Welcome to the program, Dave. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, the fact is that it's kind of interesting. One of the things that that you, as a former longtime police officer and a constable, you are, <clears throat> pardon me, a re retired person, as it turns out. However, you bill yourself as on the city council, it being a full-time position, uh, being able to be available for for the, your constituency almost at any time of the day or night. I uh, Religiously, I work at least uh, 40 hours, sometimes 50 hours a week. And, uh, you know, I tell people that I'm not a politician, I'm a public servant. I get elected to help my constituents and whatever the problem might be. So uh, I'm very fortunate that I have the, the time and the ability to do it. You know, when we take a look at some of the things that you've had to confront uh, in, your, in the previous four terms that you happen to be on the City Council, what things can you point to, Dave, that you'd like to be able to say, you know, this is where we were able to go ahead and make a difference that you were intricately a part of? Because you're typically tend, tend to be a perennial top vote getter. Well, you know, m my position is, uh, and I try to stay to the issues, but, uh, and, and I try to use some common sense and, and hopefully uh, that with my, uh, my colleagues that we can work this out. Uh, every issue uh, I'm involved in, no matter if it's good, bad, or indifferent, and I try to use a common sense approach. Uh, and, and that's a virtue that I, that I think I had. And, and I always tell my constituents, nobody knows my city like I do. I've been 40 years on the, on the streets as a public servant, as a police officer. I've been uh, eight, almost eight years as a, as a city councilor. I make it a point to go at least 40 hours a week. My people call me uh, either by email or by phone. Uh, I'm there every, every day to service what their needs are. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have the backing of our city departments. Uh, being chairman of public safety, I'm out there. I, uh, the, the police chief has been uh, second to none to me. Anytime I have a, a public safety issue, speeding issue, whatever it may be, he addresses it very professional. So uh, I feel comfortable. It's, it's a place where uh, I have a full-time job, even though I'm supposedly retired. Can you give us an indication, being the chairman of the Public Safety Committee for the Haverhill City Council, can you tell us how this new version uh, is, is working out or is expected to work out with there being now a public safety administrator being the chief of police, overseeing not only the police department but the fire department as well, if I'm not mistaken? We are so fortunate. You know, I, I commend the mayor, and I, and I mean this very sincerely, him making this position a commissioner of public safety. Unfortunately, I haven't been a, uh, a champion of the uh, administration in the, in the Haverhill Fire Department. Uh, I think there was a lot of issues there that could have been handled uh, at, at that chief's level, and it never was. It got out of hand. And unfortunately, uh, the, the Haverhill Fire Department in general paid the, the, paid the price for a certain few, and it, was, it wasn't fair. So come along, Chief Alan DeNaro. Here's a gentleman that is strictly an administrator. He's a leader. And he has the ability not only to do public safety as far as police goes, but he was a farmer, uh, a fireman in Florida. He's got that expertise there. And with him being chairman, uh, commissioner of public safety, he'll have the reins to do everything that's public safety issues to the city. Uh, just in the past five weeks that he's been on board uh, as heading both departments on an interim basis, he has taken the Bradford Fire Station, and he has done wonders over there. So he's got the new roof on. He uh, has removed all the asbestos that was in the building. It was a, a hazard for the safety of the firefighters. Uh, he's built a new room for the turnout gear, the, f the gear that the firefighters wear to a fire, and if it gets wet, mm -hmm. they have to have a certain room to dry it out. Otherwise, it will get all mold. Uh, and he's picked the, the morale of the fire department 180 degrees. He's, uh, he's, he's a big believer in chain of command, span of control. He told his five deputies on the fire department, I will send you to school. I will make you, when you come out of that school, when you get through on this department, you will be qualified to be a, a fire chief. That's the schooling you're going to have. You're going to have my backing. You're going you're gonna to run the department along. Even though the fire chief it will be second in command, he'll still have some administrative duties. Mm -hmm but he's going to work under the command of, of Chief DeNaro. 
And uh, I'm just excited about what's happened here for public safety in the city. He's uh, taken the, uh, the uh, fire hoses that used to be three inch, made them five inch, which the average person figures it's not much, but we could never do a mutual aid in this city. We could never go to Methuen or Lawrence with our trucks because we didn't have adequate uh, fire uh, uh, pressure to put out a fire. The chief, uh, Denaro, has taken this on board. He's gonna put com uh, computers in the fire trucks. When the bell hits for a fire or an emergency, it, they, the uh, uh, driver gets in, the, in, the, in his uh, fire truck, and on the screen it will tell you where the fire is, the location, if there's a fire hydrant there, if it's operable or none. Now we have over 150 fire hydrants in the city that just don't operate, they're just ant antiquated. Well, they're just, they're, they're stuck just, or they're... They're old. But he's brought this up to date. So at least, even though they're out of commission, at least we know that we, we, can, we can use the good ones. Now, if we had that knowledge and we had the, the firepower on Howard Street, we would have never lost that house. Mm. They had to go from Howard Street over to Canosa Avenue. You give an example of, of uh, revamping or readjusting or adapting to uh, present day circumstances by being able to have a commissioner of public safety and sort of realigning the public safety aspect in the city of Haverhill. Are there any other parallels that you can foresee that you'd like to see implemented in the future if you're elected for your ne in the next term if you're uh, on the city council? Do you have, you know, what, what considerations do you see as a goal that you'd like to see move forward? And if they do happen to have that parallel, what would they be? Yeah, well, you know, I, the, the, my, my big thing, basically with a fire department, the, the police department is top shelf. It's one of the best departments in, in, in the state. And, you know, without revealing any sources of apprehension for criminals, the chief in this city, downtown, in high crime areas, has taken upon himself to locate cameras that catch a lot of, of our individuals who are committing bad crimes. Uh, otherwise, we don't have the manpower to get out there. Uh, he has the computers in, in, in his... Uh, Technology in place of manpower. He's, he's done wonders. Just at Columbus Park, this is a small mm -hmm. thing, with a vandalism that's been done up there. Yep. Everything's been caught on camera. Two minutes left before we happen to have, uh, close, but could you tell us what are the things would you like to see implemented or changed or on your radar screen for being able to, to have an improvement that is necessary to be done? Well, I think that uh, the chief has taken upon himself the big thing is to save money and, 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 and uh, improve manpower is take the uh, dispatchers that are presently at the station on the fire side of it and putting them firemen back on the street where they belong in the trucks and taking our civilian dispatchers and have them man this. Uh, this is a, a public safety issue, it's a, it's a manpower issue, and it's a cost saving issue for the city. Uh, a, a dispatcher gets half of what a, a firefighter would get. Uh, the benefits aren't as great as what firefighters get. But uh, I think the bottom line of this whole thing is strictly direction. I commend the mayor, I can't tell you how often I've said to the mayor, Mayor, you made the right decision by doing what you're doing with, with Chief Denaro. The average person, if they had the opportunity to sit down and talk to him, you could gain a wealth of information in a short period of time when it comes to public safety. He's well, your, a brilliant man. Your compliments to the mayor are probably well, well appreciated because well, you, you have not always seen eye to eye. We've only got 30 seconds I, left. The mayor and I have gone back, well, oh, almost seven and a half years, and mm -hmm. I've on issues that I don't agree with him. But we came face to face, and we were, sometimes we resolve them, sometimes we don't. But when the mayor is right, I'm his biggest supporter. And when it comes to public safety, the mayor has stepped up to the plate, and I can't say enough good about him. That's great. David Hall, who's running for your fifth term for re-election to the Haverhill City Council, thanks very much for being here today. We wish you the best of luck in the upcoming November elections. Thank you for having me. Thank you.